day. Oh well, not that I'm going to see much of it. Right. Let's go and inspect my base of operations for the day. Yes. Today, I will mostly be being... ...covered in defrost. So, last time, I uh, left the wing here. Uh, with all the welding pretty much done, uh, there's a little bit I didn't show you just inside, which I'll, I'll show you as part of another video. Uh, you're probably a bit fed up with watching me welding this wing, but it was all worth it. There's um, a couple of things coming which are going to make a uh, sense of everything uh, that I've been doing on this wing. Uh, the, the reasoning behind doing so much to this one is there's a lot that I haven't had a go of doing before on a car. And I'm used to an awful lot of this. So I want to make sure I get everything right on one side. And hopefully learn all the shortcuts, make all the mistakes on one side to make the, um, the other side go a little bit quicker and a little bit easier. In fact, I don't know if, I don't know if I've showed you this side yet. Uh, it's actually pretty good, this side. There's um, Lower down, there's some rust and things, which I'll show you when the time comes. But the um, you know usual bubbling along the top of the wing here, that's all coming out anyway. But um, if you go back, about if you look inside, you go about, about half an inch back, and it's really good. So I'll probably just cut that section out. I don't... Um, absolutely don't need to uh, do as much as I've done to the other side. So what I've decided to do, as soon as I've got the underneath of this boot floor to do, there's a few uh, little suspect areas and one proper good old hole, is I think now's the time to take this diff out. Here we go. Yeah, I know it looks like, um, well actually it's a bit dark, but I'll show you up close in a second. Um, with that out, it means I can check the whole floor uh, it means I can check the uh, suspension mountings. Give me something different to do because I'm getting a bit fed up with welding myself. So I'll probably um, do the jobs I need to do to the diff. Some cosmetic stuff, really. And a few other little bits and pieces. I'll do the brake rebuild as well. And uh, probably be a little bit more interesting to watch, I would think, too. But it means I've got access to the rest of the underneath of this floor to check it out and weld up any holes. And also, I definitely need to rebuild that battery box because that's really not good at all. So um, I'm going to figure out how I'm going to film this and then we'll just take the stiff off and the, uh, the rear suspension uh, step by step. Uh, right, wish me luck. Let's see how we go on. Right, so pretty obviously the first thing I'm going to need to do is jack this thing up. side, jack it up symmetrically, um, use extended axle stands and then hopefully be able to remove the jacks and everything else. Let's see how we do it. going under there for any length of time other than just to put um, uh, axle stands underneath there so I'm not going to work on the car with these two here but it's just nice to have the whole thing lifted up symmetrically uh, right let's have a look underneath see where we're going to put these axle stands right next thing we need to get the wheels off as well you take these off obviously I'm not going to reuse these horrible old things they're all rusty however they'll do perfectly well 
to protect the threads on the studs. Okay, so that's the car fully supported. Uh, it's actually supported on the um, the rear quarter, uh, sort of inner panels, which are nice and solid. One, I uh, I completely welded up, so I know that's okay. And the other one, I've just checked, and it's only rusty. The rear edge, that's solid. There we go. Right, now I'm going to give you a good close look at underneath. Um, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, here we go. Okay, just to give you an idea of what it's like under here. Uh, it, pretty much what I expected, to be honest. It's obviously dead rusty, but it's, it's not. It's not horrible, you know. It's it's uh, there's some bits of this beautiful floor are going to need doing, but that's no big deal. Uh, the diff, obviously, which I'm going to take out in a minute, is grotty, but not knackered. You know, it's just what you'd expect from a car that sat here and had all the paint, sort of flake off it over the last fifteen years or whatever. Um, you actually see one part there, which is darker than everywhere else. That's where the underseal has obviously taken and stayed and been okay. And it's uh, it's fine by the looks of it. That's obviously where it's had some work in the past. You see, it's a black area. Let's see if I can put one of these lights up just to show you what I can see. Um, there you go. If you can see that, that's not bad at all. Really not bad at all. The um, battery box, which is just down here, I'll show you closer. I can see it underneath the diff is is a bit knackered. That's going to need rewelding, but it's not anything I didn't expect. The um, lever arm struts look a bit crusty. Um, as do the mounts, possibly. It's all doable. Let's have a look at the other side. The other side looks worse. But a lot of it is just muck and surface rust. Until I get the thing off, I've got no idea. Okay, some pieces of these chassis layers are going to need doing. But again, it's, uh, it's nothing I didn't expect to have to do. Okay, so now it's time to um, start undoing things to get this diff and rear axle and brake packs removed. Um, right, I'll put you, probably put you on the tripod for the next bit. And um, we'll do this um, step by step. Right, so quite obviously underneath the car, one of the first things we need to do is have a look at disconnecting this drive shaft. So there's the differential, that's the, uh, the pinion end there, I think. And this is the obviously drive shaft going off towards the, the gearbox. Now this should spin round quite freely. Let's have a look. I can lean underneath reasonably freely. There we go. Okay, so what we'll do, we'll put some, uh, release some penetrance on these bolts first of all. Let's not be shy, let's put loads on. And then we'll give that a couple of minutes to take its uh, take effect. They actually don't look too bad, these bolts, if I'm honest with you. And then we'll start to undo it. Oh, well, we're letting the penetration fluid take effect on these nuts. What else we'll do is we'll find a way of supporting the um this drive shaft as well because um obviously it's um it's just going to drop uh once we uh, we disconnect it from the diff right i'll bring you back in a minute uh, that doesn't look very happy let's see if we can There we go. That's the stiction broken on the first one. As you can see, just off camera, I've actually loosened these off because it was so difficult to do without getting in the way of the camera. But now they should just undo. Do, I'm just going to put a couple of punch marks, one on either side of this joint to make sure that we put this back exactly where we got it from. I don't know how critical it is, but we might as well put it back where it came from. There we go. 
Right, so that's job one done of probably 96 to get this thing off. So one more thing is really vital, or well, many things are vital, is that you actually label and set aside every single thing that you take off the car. So we've got drive shaft bolts and there's four of them. Me will replace them anyway, but we'll see. It probably only cost pennies. Right, onwards, next part. Right, next thing to undo is this clever pin from the handbrake cable. There's one on this side and there's one on the other side as well. And this is the left side, exactly the same. Just bend the split pin round. Oh good. So the split pin breaks inside the clever spin. Marvellous. There you go, that's gone now. Right, so pop him out. Now, because I've broken the bloody split pin. There you go. Ah oh, good. How convenient. Uh, normally I'd put the um, the split pin in here to keep the clever spin in place, but I broke it, so now I've found a piece of welding wire on the floor. Lucky me. So that can just go in like that and I'm going to cut the ends as well because this stuff is like dead bloody sharp isn't it there you go. so I'll just snip that back right now what I'm going for that now um I'll just show you the arrangement by the way for the handbrake on this it's um uh yeah interesting to say the least I'll just uh, bring the camera over a bit okay so this is the end I've just disconnected from here which goes into the the back of the um the brake drum obviously to activate the handbrake or the e-brake if you're aseptic um you got one cable one connector there and it goes right over you can see right over to the other side that disconnected a second ago and then there's an adjuster obviously to balance it i would guess in the middle also it's got this like fabric strap which is attached to the back of the diff how quaint um so i'm not going to try and undo that i am obviously going to replace it later i think we'll just stick a knife through that one and call that done um yeah onwards Okay, further to my last, here's the, uh, and I'll see if I can just put a light on it for you so you can see the full uh, World War II <laughs> glory of a, of a canvas strap. How quaint, as I say. Right, I'm just going to put a knife through that if I can balance this, um, if I can balance this light there, or somewhere there, or maybe not. Uh, let's see if I can do the light with one hand and then knife through this with the other one. That's not going to happen properly. So. How about that? Oh, there we go. Right, so let's just cut through this strap which is holding this on here. I'll try to. Yeah. To be honest, if you just give it a dirty look, it'll probably fall to bits. It's a boss, it's a buggery. Come on. There you go. Marvellous. Uh, there you go. So, obviously, that will all be replaced with, I don't know, something equally as naff. Uh, right, I think now it's probably disconnecting some of the, um, the hydraulic brake unions, I would guess. Um, let's see. Right, next job on the list is to sever... That sounds good, that doesn't answer. Yeah. Interesting word. Yeah, to sever the hydraulic line, which is that that you can see there, just pointing to. So you've got a fixed line there, which I imagine goes onto the, um, onto the diff, maybe. Not sure, I'm just going to need to see what it is. But obviously that flexible line needs to be cut through. I'm obviously not going to save any of the fluid that's in it. Most of it was drained out anyway. But I don't really want it all over the floor if I can help it. So I'm going to use... Wait for it. Wait, there's a stupid job. There's a stupid tool. I'll be making up your own jokes. I mean this. Look. Right, so basically I'm going to clamp the flexible hose with that. Then cut the other side of it. And hopefully I won't get hydraulic fluid all over the show. Right. Sounds good, doesn't it? Let's see how we get on. Well, there's just enough room for me, you, and the camera. So, the idea is, what we're gonna do is, uh, this here is the hose that we need to cut. It's this one. This is the line that goes towards the front of the car, and the other line which goes towards the split for the rear brakes is it's actually um, uh, clipped to the diff. So what I need to do is cut this, but I don't want fluid everywhere. 
So what I'm going to do is pinch it off with these and then hopefully I won't get drowned with hydraulic fluid. So I know you can't see this bit, but it's really quite difficult to see. I'm going to clamp up the bottom of this, the very, very bottom of this hose with this. Now, as I say, I'm not saving any of these parts anyway. Maybe some of the unions, but really not much at all. So I'm not doing this. I'm not doing this to uh, to protect the parts. I'm just doing it so we don't get covered in all sorts of um, fluid. Now some is going to come out because there's obviously some in the drum, in the um, in the lines and everything else. So we're going to get a little bit somewhere. Um, I've got an idea. I'm going. I'll bring you back in a second. I'll show you what I'm doing. Right. So I'm sorry if this is just a little bit shaky, but it's um, it's really awkward to film. Um, these are the the clips that I had before. I'm just going to undo the clamp parting. There you go. You see what they do? They obviously pinch together, right? Here's the. This is sorry about the light. The, the hydraulic pipe is this one. It's a flexible hose. So what I'm going to do? I'm going to put one clip here, and tighten it down, and that effectively pinches off the hydraulic fluid from the other end. So I'm just going to tighten this up. There's a plastic thing which just slides down and, and locks it. You can. There you go. So that's that's pinched off there. And what I was going to do was just cut this, but if I do that, cut that there, then everything that's in the lines, which is still going to the brakes, uh, which is still complete at the back, um, all the hydraulic fluid is going to go everywhere. So what I want to do is get a second one, which is here. Um, we'll do it. Maybe a smaller one might work a bit better. And I'm going to put this here. Okay, make that nice and tight. The, the gripping really really tight now in theory uh, the top one isolates the axle from the car and the uh, the bottom one isolates all of the hydraulics from this pipe so if I can find there we go, our trusty poundland knife in theory I should just be able to cut through this so if I disappear in a sea of hydraulic fluid you know bulls it up here we go that's cut through and okay there's a little bit of a leak it's not the end of the world though is it that could be a lot worse right I'm just going to reclamp this so it's nice and tight and I'll get back to you and there we go just in case it wasn't clear in the last shot that's uh that's the brake line set with very very little loss I mean there's literally a tiny drop on the floor right I'll keep going so next job on the me and you is um really this is just a lighten it really is to take these brake drums off and that's, that's actually not bad it's actually moving um these are going to be seized to buggery they may need some heat they may need some persuasion of the um the pneumatic kind i don't know the first thing i'm going to do is put some penetrating fluid in which uh i'm gonna let me get the penetrating fluid sorry not trying to make you seasick there we go put him in there no, 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 that's better. Let it be on there for it to wash behind. Right, same on the other side. This side is, I don't know why, this side is way rustier than the other side. Right, we'll let that do its thing. Um, if you're wondering what I'm using, it's this WD 40 Specialist Fast Relief Penetrant. Release Penetrant. Freudian money. Um, don't know if it's any better than anything else, but I had WD-40 on it, was yellow and shiny, so I bought it. End of. Gotta love eBay. Right, back in a minute when that's hopefully done something. Okay, next task is to remove these hubs. Um, you can see, Phillips screw there. Oh, I said whatever. Phillips screw there. Now, I've got a feeling um, that they just might well be uh, locked in. Um, and, and tough to get out and all the rest of it. So what I'm gonna do is to try and cut a small notch in one edge and then drive the screw around, which I really don't know how too much hope for, but you never know. Um, Right, so the signs of life here in this ear screw. So what I'm using is this chisel with this adjuster and I'm hitting 
I'm cut a small slot in the edge of the screw and I'm hitting that way to try and rotate the screw and shock it round. I think I've just seen a little bit of movement, so that's why I brought you back so you can see what I'm doing. So, there you go. And you can see there's a the screw rotating and I didn't want to drill it out because quite often it just gets stuck. Uh, in the thread, it means I've got to drill and re-thread the whole bloody thing then. But this is actually coming out okay. Fine. You can probably see it rotating now. Can get it out of my fingers. Yes! There's actually no head or anything in this now, so I've got to do it with my fingers. There we go. Victory! And again, I'm not a over of levering things off but it's so it's so lightly held on here it's not I'm not put much force at all it's really just a little bit of force to keep it off there we go marvelous full of um muck yeah I guess uh that's all very um brown uh right I'll give you a closer look there we go, all very posh. Um, kind of probably looks a little bit sweaty. Um, probably not too bad, really, to be honest. It's all being replaced anyway. So that's just going to make this a little bit lighter. Uh, right, so I'll just quickly, I'll probably time lapse you for the other side. Hopefully it'll come off a little bit easier. And then we'll move on to something which is going to free up this diff. Right, so the next couple of things we need to undo is that lever arm there to the drop link. Okay, that's going to get some penetrating fluid. And then we've also got the anti-roll bar, or sway bar, I think the Americans call it. That's there, and I don't know whether you undo it from the car or from the diff. I think I'll try and undo it from the diff because it's a bit more accessible, and then we'll see about undoing it from the car later. So... Um, yeah, and obviously there's the lever arm. So we need to undo that bolt there. Right, so we'll spray them with some penetrating fluid and then we'll come back and see what, uh, what the score is. Let's not be shy. And a bit of there as well. Come on, are you? A little bit on this. A little bit. Oh. There, and on the other side, and here as well. Right. Hopefully, uh, yeah, we'll, uh, we'll give it a few minutes for that to get the message. And, uh, yeah, see how we go. There we go, got some help in the garage today in the form of my dad. Hello, oh, dad. Oh. And uh, Sid as well. Sid, Sid, Sid. Yeah, Sid likes me, dad. Doesn't like me. It's a one man cat and he hates me. Right. First on the list is the, uh, the link to that lever arm shelf there. Let's see if this goes. This one's obviously been a little less cooperative, so I'm gonna basically send it the message. Buy an airmail. <laughs> right, let's see if this does any better. Have it. 
<laughs> oh yeah. That's it. Message delivered. There's no washer on that. Oh, how quaint. Nice. Right, okay. Onwards. Right, we'll just see if we can do these anti-sway bar links from here. Oh, anti-sway bar links. See if we can get the ring in this time. Yes, good. Once you dismantle the suspension like this on an old car, any notion that you're going to buy a car and just go on the road and drive it is a, is a distant memory. You'd have to be stupid. Um, okay, maybe one that's been looked after or whatever, but certainly you wouldn't go out and buy a car which was quite obviously ropey and then uh, try and drive it. This this Doing something like this would soon dissuade you. But uh, let's undo the sway bar links on the other side, and that's quite a lot of the work done then, at least for this part of it. Right, other side. Give this a little bit of another squirt. Right, so this is the opposite side now. Um, come on, you know you want to. Right, there we go. So as you can see, I've actually ended up cutting the, um, you can see just there, Sorry about that. Uh, the, um, the drop links, because one, I'm going to replace them anyway, and two, the bolts with that bloody seized in, I've ended up losing a knuckle, uh, trying to save something I'm not going to keep anyway. So I've had to cut that side, and excuse the wobbly camera, I'll just put you over this way. You can just see there, right in the middle of the picture, I cut that side as well. So the next thing I need to do, are the bolts which secure the leaf springs to the car and i'll just turn you around a bit okay there we go so this is where these hangers go now you know from uh, one of the previous videos i did all sorts of welding and stuff around here so this has all been out before so this is going to come out fairly easily um so what i'll do i'll take the strain on the um the shock or the, the spring and then i'll uh, i'll take out the bolts from that side Is indeed one off. Right, managed to get it on. Yes, that was easier. Right. And now I'm just going to tap that shackle out that way. Right, so we're on the left side now. Now I haven't had this shackle undone, so I'm hoping. And it comes undone reasonably easily. Um, I'll try and get, oof, I'll try and get the one that you can't see first. That's the top one. Let's see if I can get this undone, and then I'll get the one that you can see. Do not tell me these have got odd nuts on. Surely not. No, just knackered. All right. Okay. Well, that one doesn't want to touch it. So, show it who's boss. There we go. Right, rattle gun is here. This will fret its gainers. Okay. <sighs> Nuts is that rusty and actually won't go on. It's on. Let's give it a little tappy tap with our hammer. There we go. Let's persuade it on with this little darling. Here you go, sweetheart. I'll just put it to bed there. Yes, that's all. Right, now then. Oh, yes. 
Not that I'm going to be able to get the nut out of this bloody socket, like, but it's definitely, most definitely off the thingy. Yeah, I'll show you. There you go. I think you can see that, probably. Right, now I've got to get the nut out of the thing. I'll just stand by a sec. Let me get the other nut out. And it looks like to get at the other spring hanger, I'm going to have to take off the, uh, the exhaust, which I'm just going to have to come off anyway, so it doesn't really make any odds. Hopefully this will come off with the windy gun pretty easy. Uh, yeah, well, let's see. It can be quite persuasive, this thing. It's like the, the atomic warfare of the socket world. I knew it, baby. Ow! Ow, yeah, bastard. Do you know what? You, you'd never you'd never guess. <laughs> that actually hurt that. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Right, well, this time I'm going to put some persuasion fluid on as well. Yeah, that's going to make zero difference, but, you know. Do you know what? That fucking me. That really hurts. Come on, will ya? You're pissing me off now. What do you want? I mean, you know. So, right, nearly ready to drop this um, this lot out now. There's only the um, the spring hanger bolts to take out, which I've actually started to do. Uh, you might be able to see, as you can see, it's right in bloody front here. Um, the rear box on this has been replaced with a nice stainless steel jobby at some stage, so we'll be keeping that. Um, uh, I don't want to say too much, but we are keeping it and adding something to it. Um, so we need to cut this off or take it off. I want to keep as much of that piping as, as I can because the rest of the exhaust is actually not so bad. But I might just cut this off at this end, I don't know yet. But it's got a whole new stainless steel system to go on it anyway. So I might just make life easy for myself. If it unbolts easily, uh, in fact, actually that bloody centre box is, yeah, that pipe's in the way. I might just cut it, just to save a little bit of time, just save as much pipe as I can. Don't know. Uh, we'll see anyway. That's got to come out of the way. And yeah, continue taking the spring hanger bolts. That side's done. I think, is there one more to do on that side? Can't remember, but we'll take that off as well. And at that stage, we can actually let the diff drop a little bit. It's going to be hanging on. What's left of these tatty hangers, which you may or may not be able to see. You will be able to see them later as I cut them in half. And, uh, yeah, then we can start looking at dropping it down. Right, that's it. So, let's get this exhaust out of the way. And we can give a good inspect of it to see what it's like. Uh, once that's out of the way, as I say, we'll do the uh, spring hanger bolt. Surprise on words. It's um, it's stainless steel, but you can see there's obviously a little bit of um, some ferrous there along this edge. Uh, but it's all really nice. That'll polish up really well, and it should be able to split nicely at this box here. And if anything, we've got a spare bit of pipe. So there are plans for this. So I'm not going to bin it. Uh, where am I going to put it? I'll find somewhere. Onwards. Right, so I've got two weapons to attack this with. One, a dead blow hammer, which is kind of going to be counted to the end of that nut, which I actually don't need, but I just don't like bashing the ends of nuts with metal hammers. Or, further up the scale, yes, copper anyway. That'll, that'll sort it out probably. Should do, that should knock it out. If it doesn't, it's, um, it's going to get a scene to with this. Dun, dun, dun. Right, we'll start at the bottom anyway. Let's try our dead butt. So this thing should just come off this plate here. Let's apply and whack. 
Yes, I think it's seen what it's got in store and decided I'm not having any of that bloody lump hammer. Right, I'm going to have to leave it off the other side anyway. Right, let me get my, uh, my leverage weapon. Another size weapon for this particular episode of GBH. There we go. Let's see if we can just lever it off. You know you want it. Oh, she is. I do hope that was mud. I can just hear people saying there's a trick to this. It's called doing it properly. Spot the deliberate mistake. Yes, you all saw it coming. When that comes out, yes, it's going to drop like a bugger. Duh. So let's move our floor jack out of the way a little bit. Let us drop the car back onto it. There we go. That's the weight off the spring and the car weights off the spring. <coughs> Got a feel that's going to come out a bit easier now. You could all see that happening then, couldn't you? You knew what was going to happen and you didn't want to tell me. Thinking, ah, the car's going to fall off that jack stand there. Watch this, it's going to be good. We'll make a meme out of this or put him on Facebook and they're killing himself. No. There you go. Told you it'd come off. <gasps> right, so that out. That out. These rubbers aren't even rotten. It's uh, like the other side was when I first took them out. They're not rotten at all. Maybe slightly misshapen, but if you can see, they're, they're not rotted. Um, we'll have to see what kind of rubber the new ones are made of. Right, I will quickly just reassemble this and chuck it in our box full of crap. And um, then we'll do the other side and possibly even lower the dip to the floor. Oh, we're not be done then. But anyway, onwards. Okay, so likewise, we can now give our starboard side a, uh, a swift C and two, if you know what I mean. Nah. No room to swing a cat, never mind a hammer. Come on! Grr. This one's already been out, so it shouldn't be. <laughs> shouldn't be too difficult. Let's try this with a bit of um, copper goodness. Here, there. That's it. Yes, the old adjustment one is coming in well here. Come on, enough. I'm good time for it. That went well. Well, that was the electrics blowing up. Uh, not exactly sure why. Right, I'll tell you what, let's leave that there and we'll just investigate why this, <laughs> this has just decided to blow up. Um, yeah, poof, proper bang there. Oh, well, there's the rest of the morning gone. Onwards! Right, quick note to self. Note one, um, iron filings and an extension cable uh, don't always match. Uh, two, try not to be sitting next to it when said... Uh, iron filings bridge out one of the connections inside the extension cable and it goes poof as you saw in the last video and um, three probably not a brilliant idea to put an engine two gearboxes and an overdrive right in front of the bloody fuse box anyway onwards right now then explosions and electric fires and all the rest of it out the way Let's see if we can't use our oldie persuader to give uh, this shackle the message. Uh, it can't be far off now. So let's see what else bad we can make happen. I don't ever see this on bloody car, so I stay. Come on, you little toad. Ah, oh, yes, there we go. Here we go, here we go. Have it. There you go. Message received and understood. So, I'm going to take that out. Out. So here's our rubber minkies. They shall go back onto said shackle with the shitty dirty bit off the edge. You've seen all of this before, but I've got replacements for all this, I think. Um, so said shackle may well end up in the bin or a piece of wall art or 
I don't know, throwing it next to those dogs. No, I wouldn't really do that. Right, okay, onwards. Let's see if we can drop this part of the suspension down after we cut those um, straps. Always assume the straps don't fall to bleeding pieces on me anyway. Right, here we go. Okay, with both axles supported firmly, let strap severing commence. I mean, if these were new straps, I might be tempted to unbolt them, but they're not, so I'm not, so... Yeah, anyway. Ooh, that's one. Two. See, look, that must have had some stretch on it, that. It still had some going. in it. Time to employ the use of our differential extraction system um, under the car. There you go. Now people will tell you don't start more than one project. Don't have two projects on the go. But if you have two projects on the go, you're going to have a wheel off another one, which is more or less almost safe. Right, anyway, let's see if we can lower this down. on the thingy. Don't know. That is. <laughs> right, I'm gonna pull the trolley thingy off to this side. Yeah, that's three. Angry. That's going back a bit, I can't even say that now. Not okay, now I've got to go and do those front bolts. Uh, Okay, one word. Let's see if we can't get this bolt off. Now, right, let's see if we can't get this bolt off. Now, I've already sprayed uh, penetrating fluid on this. Um, I didn't film it because, uh, well, let's face it, you can only unleash so much excitement on YouTube for one day, can't you? Um, right, so, let's get this now. This is already quite early, so uh, it might work. It might actually come off all right. I think we're going to be all right here. Yes. <laughs> oh, bloody hell, it's all. Coming off like it's only just been put on there. Fabulous. Look at that. Right. Yeah. Just get my battering ram and knock that bolt out. And that essentially uh, is that side free. Give it a knock. Nah. Potentially. Off this side, so bolt, bolt, yeah, yeah. Come on, come on, you know you want to. This comes, yes, freedom. Right, so that is the diff completely detached now. It's detached from that side, it is detached from that side, and is now only held on by the one thing that I've forgotten to detach, which I won't find out until I try and pull it out from underneath the car. So, I'm going to put you on time lapse because I haven't figured out how to pull this out yet, but how hard can it be? And I think we're probably about to find out. That was going so well on time lapse, I decided to pull it out in real time. That sounds so bad. <laughs> pull it out. Seems... Anyway, I'll let Max see if we can get this out. Rusty turd. Oh, yeah. You're that like that. Oh, no. Zero cooperation from the differential trolley solution. Is he coming? Yes. I'm 
don't break cables. Hanging around it. Ah, that's it. Yeah, oh Jesus, look at the stays of it. <laughs> oh well, uh, yeah. All right, well, I better give you a close look at this just so you can have a proper laugh. But at least it's out. Actually, do you know what? Thinking about it, that's actually as bad as I thought it would be. <laughs> nah, it's not bad. Just a bit of crust. A little bit of crust never hears anyone. Probably. Um. Yeah. Right, okay. So, how about I try and manhandle that up into uh, a little wooden workbench so it's at least, um, well, at least knee height anyway, so I'm not working around on the floor on it. And um, we'll keep on dismantling because, uh, let's face it, it is going to need dismantling. Uh, right, so. Well, 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 after lots of grunting and swearing, there it is. It's, um, that's where it's going to live for the next God knows how long it takes me to rebuild. Actually, it shouldn't be very long, he said. Because uh, as far as I know, there's actually no faults with it. It's only done a low mileage. But, um, yeah, all nicely easy to get at. It, you can rotate it, sometimes unintentionally. But you can, if you're careful, you may only injure one limb. Um, yeah, and it's at a reasonable working height as well. So, uh, first things first. I'm going to tidy up in the garage a little bit first. Put some of my tools away. But, obviously, first things first. You've got to get rid of some of this. Crap, Jesus. Oh, do not tell me someone sprayed it with underseal, you morons. Who sprayed nuts with underseal? <sighs> That's all got to come off. Oh, well, no biggie. At least it's probably not rusty under there. <laughs> probably. Um, yeah, we'll start dismantling all these bits off. It's not as complicated as it looks, and it's nowhere near as rusty as it looks either, actually. All this shit just flakes off, man. There you go. And actually, under all that rust, there's uh, more rust. But anyway... Uh, yeah, I'll bring you back. I'm going to go and have a sandwich or something. I've, I've, I've earned it, I think, already. And uh, come back, and then we'll start to um, tidy the garage and then clean up some of the um, the crap. Also, we'll we'll, start, we'll dismantle the rest of it as well, because, you see, these leavings of the drop links have got to come off, as, um, well, as is basically everything else, and the brake packs and all sorts of stuff. Right, that's it. Onwards.